morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Monday morning. And dare I say, welcome to the very best 15 minutes of your day. And this week, beloved, I want to talk to you about your next season. Your next season. Again, your next season. I don't know what you dealt with in the last five months of this year. I don't know what you're dealing with on this the seventh day of June. But what I want to focus on this week is your next season. Why 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 your next season, you ask? Because the Bible tells us in Proverbs four and eighteen, the path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter. One version says, the path of the righteous is like the morning sun. And let me tell you something about the morning sun. It always shines brighter and brighter. And let me tell you something else about that morning sun. Like God, it's it's consistent in all its ways. And while I'm at it, let me tell you one more thing about that morning sun. Even when it's raining outside, like it's doing here in Atlanta, even when it's cold, like it is in some parts of this country, even when the kid has been locked up, even when the divorce papers have been signed, sealed, and delivered, even when there's no money in your checking account, there is one thing I know to be true. The morning sun gets brighter and brighter. Again, the Bible says in Proverbs 4 and 18, the path of the righteous is, is like the morning sun, shining ever bright till the fullness of day. And before I leave that thought alone, let me tell you something else. It's interesting that, that when you cannot see the light, the morning sun is still getting brighter and brighter. Even when you're, you're clouded by darkness and you don't know which way to turn, the morning sun is still getting brighter and brighter. Even when you're confused and you want to give up on your journey, you can. Trust me, you can throw in the towel. God has given all of us free will. But despite that, the morning sun just gets brighter and brighter. One last time, the path of the righteous is like the morning sun shining ever bright till the fullness of day. Or, or, or it gets brighter. Here you go. It gets brighter. Here you go. It gets brighter until you fully understand what is happening in your life. You know, when things are dark, it makes sense at times to feel alone. When things are dark, it makes sense at times not to understand what is happening all around you. Why did I lose my business? Why did I have the car accident? I dated the guy for seven years, and poof, he was gone and didn't call. These things sometimes don't, don't make sense to your mind. I get it. Things in the dark, when you can't see, rarely if ever make any sense. And let me tell you something else. As a man who has spent a fair number of days in the dark, <laughs> Uh, being in the dark just sucks. I wish I had a more astute or intellectual way to phrase it, but it's true. It just sucks. It's, it's painful. It's aggravating. It's, it's disorienting. It's, uh, it's confusing. I mean, we stagger and we stumble along wondering, where is God? Why is he allowing me to go through this? I feel stuck and, and broken. Like I can't move forward. And in this moment, we are, com we are perplexed and, and we are, we're crushed by the weight of what we're going through in the dark. And in the words of Fannie Lou Hamer, have you ever felt sick and tired of just being sick and tired? You move ahead, slowly groping and grasping, hoping to find a foothold in life hoping and praying that something somehow makes sense. But can I tell you something about the God you serve? He does his best work in the dark. 
You see, God does not throw trials at us haphazardly. He's not like some sadistic kid pulling wings off a dragonfly to see what it's going to do. No, 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 no. See, it, it, that's not the nature of the God we serve. He does not accidentally let trials slip into our lives. Things don't just happen and God put his fist up to his mouth and saying, oh, snap, look at what happened. I'm sorry. That's not the God we serve. God is a God of intentionality. Again, God is a God of intentionality. Nothing catches him by surprise, nor does anything slip through his fingers. God is a God of intentionality. If he has not done it to you, he has allowed it to happen for a specific reason. And what's that reason? I'm glad you're thinking that way this morning. Yes, he wants to get the glory, but, but it's deeper than that. He, he wants you to grow stronger. He, he wants the best for you. He, he wants, here you go, he wants you to be richer because you have gone through whatever you're going through. That's the kind of God we serve. And, and for this reason, there will be times when God, not the devil, when God will deliberately lead us into trials and tribulation, and he will do it for a specific reason. Beloved, he does not delight in seeing you in pain. He does not smile or when things are not going right for you. In fact, if I might just digress for a moment, it grieves his heart when you hurt. It hurts him when you worry. Any parent can understand this. When you feel you're at the end of your rope, dig this. If, if it didn't grieve him, why do you think he would save our tears, as the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation? But having said that, every trial we experience has been handcrafted for God, for our, by, for our, by God, for our good. By God, for our good. Trials. Ooh, trials are God's gem. Pain is the way he used to prepare us for hard times. My God, I like that one. Let me run that back one more again. Trials are God's, is God's gem. Pain is the way he used it to prepare us for hard times. And God is like a good trainer, never leaving you when you're in pain. Never leaving you when you're trying to push, push. Never leaving you when you think, I can't lift this. No, God never told you you'd understand the pain, but he did tell you he'd never leave you nor forsake you. He's there even when it's dark. He's there even when it's cold. He's there even when you cannot see your way. He's there giving us words of encouragement to push, push through. You got this, even when we're in the storm, even when we don't understand the pain we're enduring. Let me, let me leave you with this, and then we're going to pray. When we experience trials, we also experience God's comfort in a unique way. Once again, when you experience trial, you, you experience God's comfort in a unique way. You see, God's comfort is not like our comfort. Just, just, like, just like the love of a mother is often different than the love of a father. God's comfort often does not feel like our comfort. See, God's comfort gives us, a, it prepares us, I should say, here you go, prepares us in a unique way to comfort others who are going through. There you go. God's comfort prepares us in a unique way to, to comfort others who are going through. Don't let the enemy fool you. This is your season. This is your season. This will be your best season. How do I know? 
Because I read in the Bible. The Bible tells me in the book of Proverbs 4 and 18, the path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. I think I want to read that again. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the fullness of day. I'm going to read it one last time because I want you to feel this in your soul all day long. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. Have an amazing Monday. Let us pray. Father alone knows all about it. Father alone will understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by to the unshakable God. <laughs> to the God who was before there was a was. To the God who flung the planet into the galaxy, causing worlds to twirl, even billions of years later, those planets, those worlds are still spinning. To that God, we come to you this morning to say thank you. We thank you for the very breath in our bodies. We come to you today to say thank you. We thank you, dear God, because we have food on our tables. We come to you today to say thank you. Nobody on this call, to my knowledge, woke up beside a spouse who was not breathing. How can we not say thank you? To my knowledge, nobody on this call woke up and found out their child was no not not in the house. How can we not say thank you? We thank you, dear God, for all the things you're doing for us, even in the darkness of our life. For we know, God, that you work best in the dark. You work best when we can't see our way. You work best when we think hope is all gone. You work best when we're thinking about throwing in the towel. But we only know, we know that these trials, these trials have only come to make us stronger. So dear God, we thank you for the mountain. Because it's beautiful to be on the mountain. We thank you for the mountain. If the air is fresher on the mountain, we thank you for the mountain. We can see our way on the mountains. We thank you for the mountain because it feels pleasant to stand on the mountain, but we also thank you for the valley. We thank you for the times when things are confusing. We thank you for the valley because we know you, you do your best work in darkness. Heavenly Father, somebody on the sound of my voice, dear God, need a word from you. Answer their prayer, dear God. We pray that you answer their prayer when it comes to their career. We pray that you answer their prayer when it comes to their health. We pray that you answer their prayer when it comes to their marriage. Dear God, we come against any spirit of confusion in their mind. We come against any spirit of, a, of confusion in their hearts, dear God. Anything that's pushing them to throw in the towel. That thing, that thing, that thing that tried to get them to not even call in this morning, telling them, you don't need to hear it, pray this morning, dear God. We thank you for allowing them to have the strength and tenacity to push through one more day to get a word from you. Dear God, let this day be the very best day of their life, dear God. We know that you are a God that can do more than we can ask for, more than we can think of, more than we can even imagine. So we come to you, dear God, to ask you to make this day miraculous, dear God. And I would be, dear God, remiss that I didn't even go in even further and ask that. If you have somebody cross their path today, asking them, what must I do to be saved? And when you do that, great God that you are, we'll give you the praise and the glory and the adoration that you so richly deserve. For you are our God. <laughs> you are our King. And you are our deliverer. In your Son, Jesus, matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 Beloved, the path of the righteous is like the morning sun. <laughs> Shining ever brighter. Just because you don't understand right now. 
trust me, you'll understand it by and by. Hey, Big, I love you. God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. Be blessed.